Shalom Akim. I want to give all praise down and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakwadash, double honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And this lesson is going to be entitled Misfortunes Can Ash Can Be Mercy. Okay, and um this is something that you know I'm learning on my day to day because you can look at you know, shit you go through and like, damn, why well, I always got to go through this shit? Um, point, for example, i.e. is, um, I was going to the store, grab some food or whatever. And, um, I get behind this person driving fucking 15 miles an hour, you know, and same thing happens to me on my way back home. And, um, you know, normally, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still working on that. Just, just, you know, getting aggravated, like, you know. Um, getting aggravated, you know, like, damn, you know, this fucking demon, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, Satan understands and knows what pisses us off, but at the same time, when I looked around, it's like, okay, it's raining, I don't really need to be driving that fast anyway, so here it is, you could look at it as something to piss you off, or really could have been something to save my life, man, to where, you know, I speed in, in hydroplane or... You know what I'm saying? I speed and get a moving violation. Now I'm dealing with that issue with the with the law. You know? So we got to always, you know, we got to take good out of the shit that we go through, man. You know, as the brother, um, Shalom always, you know, points out in the Kent. You know, he, he, he gets into that. You know? Don't just look at things for face value, even when you watch a show or whatever. Don't just look at things for face value. You should always... You know, attempt to get something out of it, man. You know? Uh, Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And when David... uh, You know what? Let's see. Yeah, I'll, speak, I'll read from the top. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servants of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled. And upon them two hundred leaves of bread, and in hundred bunches of raisins, and in hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that which is as to be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he ab abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertaineth unto Mephishabeth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King David came to Baharim, behold, thence came out a man out of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shammai, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David, you know, because at this time it was constant war between um the house of Saul and the house of David. And that all... And he cast stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shammai, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man. Let's see real quick. I just want to see some real quick. Slock, y'all can. Uh, second Samuel's. So it says, uh, he cast stones at David and all the servants of the king and all the people and all the mighty men were on the right hand and and on his left, and thus says Shammai, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of belly all. 
the Lord have returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord have de delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because Yahweh have cursed him. Curse David. Who, who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? Actually, I'm going to read that again. I'm going to start back at verse 10 at the top. And the king said, this is King David speaking to his men that wanted to put uh, uh, Shammai to death. What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because Yahweh have said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou has done? Hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamin do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for Yahweh have bidden him. It may be that Yahweh will look on my affliction, and Yahweh will require me good for his cursing his day. So here it is. You have the guy Shammai, you know, which um, I had to take a break and see what his name meant. And his name means renown. But um, also in the Hebrew, Shammai means what to hear. All right. And, um, you know, David being a spiritual man, a man of the Lord, took it as a, uh, you know, you know, as a um, as mercy from Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. As we just read in verse 12, it says it may be. All right. So he said basically saying, let him say what he said, because it was of the most high. And it says it may be that Yahweh will look on my affliction and that Yahweh will require me good for his cursing this day. <laughs> You know, and um, like I said, you want to, you know, you want to look at your life the same way, man. You know, to where it, it could be a misfortune. You know, the most high may take a woman out of your life, you know, or he may hey, take a job out of your life, man, for, for whatever reason, man. You know, but us as a hopeful elect, we got to believe that it's for a greater good, you know. So, um. I wanted to get into the commentary of uh, 2nd Ezra 16 and 6, which is basically the, um, you know, 2nd Ezra, I mean, it's like it's 2nd Samuel 16 and 6. So it says, um, this is the Matthews Henry's concise commentary. 2 Samuel 16 and verses 5 through 14. David bore Shammai's curse much better than Zeba's flattery. By these, he was brought to pass a wrong judgment on another. By those to pass a right judgment on himself. The world's smiles are more dangerous than that than its frowns. I found this to be a hell of a quote, man. The world's smiles are more dangerous than than his frowns all right and that's actually a precept the precepts say the scriptures say um uh let me see ecclesiastes 7 and 3 it says sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better actually i'm gonna start at two so lock it it said it is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to go to the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of, few, of fools. All right, and that's a hell of a quote, man. It says, I'm reading once more. The world's smiles are more dangerous than its frowns. Once and again, David's spirit saw his life while Saul sought his. But innocence is no defense against malice and falsehood, nor are we to think it strange. 
if we are charged with that which we have most which we have been most careful to keep ourselves from it is well for us that men are not to be our judges but he whose judgment is according to truth see how patient david was under this abuse let this remind us of Yahweh Shai, who prayed for those who were vowed and crucified him. All right, and before you get any, you know, weird ideas, man, Yahweh Shai prayed for his brethren, man. Okay? Those of like mind as, as him. All right? So it says, Let us remind us of Yahweh Shai, who prayed for those who were vowed and crucified him. A humble spirit, a humble spirit will turn reproaches into reproofs and get good for from them instead of being provoked by them okay again i'm gonna read it it says a humble spirit will will turn reproaches into reproofs and get good from them instead of being provoked by them david the hand of god in it and comforts himself that god will bring good out of his affliction we may depend upon good to repay, not only for ourselves, but our sufferings. You know? And um, even King David himself, let me see. Let the... No, that's not a... Never mind, it's lucky. I think it's something else. All right, but um, Romans 8 was one of my favorite precepts too. All right? Romans 8. And verse 28. But we and we know that all things work together for them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. You know, so even you have a, you know, a person that's just trying to give you a bad day, man. You know, even in some way, shape or form, that could be that's a blessing, man. You know, the Lord wants to put you in a bit of uh, a spirit, you know, for whatever you about, you may be getting ready to an encounter, you know, or the Lord may have shit just not going your way, man. So you can have more of a nonchalant uh, attitude towards this world, <laughs> you know, all in all, it's all to the furtherance, you know, of, um, you know, of, of our spirit to the building up of our spirit, us of the hopeful elect. You know, so I mean, the point was made. You know, just want to keep it short and sweet, straight to the point, man. Let let your misfortunes, all right, which um a misfortune, I, I had to do a quick Google search, basically means uh so called bad luck, all right. Uh, sim synonyms, all right, it would be adversity, misadventure, mishap, or failure, issues. Um, be let let your misfortunes be counted as mercy. So with that, shalom to the elect.